through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. This is Spencer from the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by two of the stars of Twilight Breaking Dawn. Part two, I believe is the full title. Uh, it's a Maggie long Gray. title. It's a long title. There's a you colon in it. There's a it dash. TBD2. Okay, I like TBD2. That also sounds like something you need to be inoculated against. I'm okay with that. I'll take that in. TBD2. Uh, Maggie Grace, Mia Maestro, two of the stars, uh, who you know from any number of things. We got Lost and Taken over here. We got Alias and Poseidon over here, amongst many other I'm singer songwriter, I understand yes. as well. Um, but I got to start by talking about probably the first time I became aware of either of your careers, and that was both of your work with J.J. Abrams, you with Lost <laughs> and you with Alias. And I mean, I, I got to just start by saying, what is that experience like? Because for me, I think I saw Lost first, and I was like, oh, this is great. And then my girlfriend was telling me, oh, yeah, Alias was fun too. And I was like, yeah, really? I saw that little spy show. You know, it looked okay. And I went back and I watched it. And I was like, holy shit, this is wonderful. So what was, what was that experience like? Because that's still pretty early on and when he was making his way up in Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, I, we've talked about it a few times, the two of us. It was a great experience. I just wish we'd known each other then. It was really lovely. Um, I think JJ has the talent and the eye and the creativity just to put the best team together. Mm -hmm. And he seems to, you know, he does it in every show he produces. So um, I just love working on Alias. The cast was fantastic. Jennifer is the best <laughs> partner in crime for anything and so was uh, Ron Rifkin and Victor Garber and everyone involved in the show. And uh, uh, one of the things that, that those shows make me wonder, I mean, granted, I'm someone who loves them so I'm probably not the best source to, to wonder this, but when you're an actor, what is it like when you get these sort of like out there ideas presented to you? I mean, because at this point, you know, it's like, oh <laughs> shit, J.J. Abrams wants well, me to do now, this, of course I would. Now you understand that it's J.J. Right. So even if it's Sort of a, a concept that seems but like, what I want to say. Sometimes, I mean, his trademark is making these these incredibly human and wonderful stories, with perhaps an initial pitch that people are like, "Really?" Well, that, that's what you I'm know? saying. Like now, it's, it's like a foregone conclusion. Like, but when you're first pulpy, getting like, the idea of like a plane crash on an island or a, an espionage. You know, right. And then he just elevates the heck out of it, well, and people are just well. That's what, exactly it, what I imagine. You know? you know, now everyone knows like, oh, Star Trek, J.J. Abrams, blah blah blah. But before it's like, yeah. okay, Let the guy who magic. created Felicity wants you to be on a show on an island with a polar bear and some <laughs> French lady. We didn't know about the polar bear yet. <laughs> yeah, but when Lost, when you guys did the pilot for Lost, J.J. was already. He was yeah, I mean, yeah, it's like, like Ali Alias had already elevated, the elevated him. Respected yeah. TV producers. No, I was so excited to have yeah. the audition. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, strangely enough, I um, it was the pilot for Lost, and I went and read for JJ. And um, which role? I don't. I don't remember. <laughs> I never told you this. No. Oh my and god! I, I actually <laughs> went, crossover. I actually went and that read amazing. for this. Um, you know, we were meant to be <laughs> friends, Maggie. Seriously, Grace. yeah. <laughs> I read for it, and I, you know, it was kind of like one of those auditions that you get, and it happens a lot in television during pilot season. Then you're like, okay, like here's like seven pages of dialogue, and you gotta read for JJ or a wonderful. And there was no script in like so. an hour and a half. So I'm like, okay, so I just went and just read, <laughs> and JJ was like, you know, that was really good. That was really wonderful. I don't think you're right for this, but we'll think about this. And then like a week later or two weeks later, they're like. We're just thinking that you would be great, you know, to play Jennifer's sister. You're kidding me. So that's how oh, wow. I got yeah. the role for Alias, just auditioning that's for funny. Lost. That's so, crazy. Yeah. I wish you'd gotten Lost been, instead, though. <laughs> we would have been together in I don't know. That would have like, been amazing. I, I love both shows. <laughs> like, I think Rimbaldi is up there in terms of, like, characters and anything that I like, Omar, Rambaldi, like all this stuff is like top characters list of all time. I mean, Granny is not really a character, it's no. more of a concept, yeah. but nevertheless, really, I just love it, that. It got like, that concept got really complex towards the end. We were it like, got a little are, bit crazy. Like, Whoa, what, like, what are we doing? <laughs> like, I remember like the last, the last episodes of, of the last season were like, oh my God, okay, oh, this is going like really crazy, so. And then she got pregnant, which was kind of a bummer because it's like, oh, oh she can't. Oh my God, no, it's so nice. I mean, I obviously seeing, kids and whatever. I love rewatching those shows because, you know, 
um, Jennifer looks so beautiful. It's just so nice to see her with her belly. So those are some of my favorite shows. What, what, I mean, what is it like now that you guys have done both television, successful television and big film, to sort of go back and forth between them, you know, um, the small screen, the big screen? Do you have a preference? Is there something that you learn from the experience of working on television that you take to film? Or, you know, what is what is it like? I mean, usually the pace is very different. You know, television, you have to knock out quite a lot of pages a day. But it's also a good preparation for indie films when you also have to knock out <laughs> quite a few pages a day. Um, but yeah, I mean, something like Lost or, or or Twilight, you know, there's incredible DPs. You know, we had Guillermo Navarro and we had Larry Fong on Lost. So I don't know that there's really a line, to be honest, besides <laughs> the, the schedule. I think what I took the most from working on TV for, you know, a couple of seasons was um, just the just to be one with the crew, mm. you know, to work with the crew that you're working and just to understand that you are a family mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just be super close to the camera department and, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, because sometimes, you know, it's just... And so they're going to light you. <laughs> no, because it's not even like that. I brought coffees. It's just, it just makes like, it's not, it's not bribing. <laughs> I'm kidding. It doesn't hurt yeah. though, I'm sure. <laughs> it's not that. It's more like you have a better time and you perform mm. better if you are close to the people that you are performing. You know, oh, I agree it's with true. that for sure. Um, it becomes a, a troop. Yeah, because, you know, it's like it, it is your art. Your your the crew is your audience while you're acting. So you have to be really you know just easy with you know having them around. And, and so. something like this, I mean, it was what five six months. It's wow. really nice when you find people you really have a. Was that back to back though for the the two films? Yeah, you? we did them together. Okay. Yeah, there's two. So it was the whole thing both. being yep. six months. Okay. Yes. I mean that. It's, it's, it's TBD I mean, one and two exactly, but it's got to be like a completely surreal experience working on something like you know. I mean, Grand Lost and Alias and all the other you things know, you've worked on are big. You, but to be honest with you, um, doing the movie didn't feel very different from doing any other movie. The only thing is like the schedule was quite long, and you know for some reason we just couldn't go home. So we had to. I Maggie had a better schedule than me, but I had to stay <laughs> for like the, oh, probably like I'm five the months straight. <laughs> But, um, or it felt like five months straight, even though it maybe was like four and a half or something. But um, it didn't feel like we were doing a super, like, you know, like Poseidon, when I shot Poseidon, that felt like a super production, you know. We were doing a, th a 350 well, I mean, million that, dollar movie. Right, that was probably like, more but, action intense but, too for you, I would think. Yeah, but uh, with Twilight, it felt like, I felt like we were doing a medium budget kind of movie. And really? then mm. once, the, once the film, came out and we started doing it's when you're promoting press. it that it's this incredible then you passion realize, it's so humbling yeah, that you're never going to catch but up but the filming was pretty normal that way you know it's uh, like I'm sort of imagining though like being under I don't know if you want to call it like a fishbowl or a microscope or something because you look at like the cast of this and so it's just in like the middle of British Columbia yeah and nobody you know? was around we were staying at uh, well that hotel. just shocks me knowing like how rabid people like are for this camp. film like, yeah, I think there like were like two fans waiting at the hotel I would, I would think people were just like travel for something like this you know you think about like no fans around no wow, that's, we're, that's we, we, well the helicopters that day well yeah we but did have a that. you have paparazzi sometimes especially there was a whole oh, thing sure. with the i invented scene. a word called helipops <laughs> helipops you should, you should copyright it. that yeah you should put that on like a t-shirt or something like that's a um yeah that was but you know what it, it was pretty remote so we were all staying in you know same place and just chilling and there were only like four restaurants in town that everyone yeah. would go to so there was like an incredible camaraderie to that. yeah it was like a little a little well, community I, I, th I mean i think that speaks to what you're saying about you know you know bonding with the film crews and stuff because i mean i worked on one really shitty indie film years ago and the thing i took about from that was like the experience of doing it was terrible but the people i met on it was amazing i'm still friends with them to this day that's normally the case when yeah. you when you are doing it you know it Sometimes it's not like that, but most of the times, if you're doing a really bad movie, you're gonna like, <laughs> at least you're gonna get like one great friendship. Well, that's, out of yeah, it. that's what I'm saying. You're in the trenches together. You're working like the 17, 18 hour days together. Like one of my best girlfriends was one of the production assistants on Lost, hmm. and you know what I mean? Because you see people like sh that's the most stressful job on set because you're like yeah. between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. And she always kept you cool. I was like, that's a cool person. But I, I mean, I think it's sort of like that. If it were me after that experience, it would become almost a factor in how I chose my projects. Because 
if it's going to be a shitty, like miserable experience for three months, you. like yeah. I'd be like, oh. I think you always want good people around. Oh, I mean, yeah, sure, but like, if, the, if the work is not interesting or creative enough, you know, the better to have like someone to have a glass of wine with at the end of the day. Sure, I'm just imagining, you know, like you know, somebody's like, you know, we're going to do Avatar two, but it's going to be like the shitty experience for 12 months, but you're going to make a ton of money and everyone's going to see this versus doing something like you know, like uh, Avatar two. I would be really. Think, cool I would think that's really Really cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying yeah. in this scenario with shitty people involved this time. Say everyone oh, left from Avatar the first one. Avatar has amazing people involved. Great. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm just I'm just imagining some like huge budget project that you know it's like they could throw that is all the, the biggest money. budget you can think of though. That's true. Like I like I was talking to a friend about you know Transformers Four, uh, and he's a director. I was like you know if I paid you ten million dollars to do Transformers Four, what would you do to make this into a film you gave a shit about? And he was like. I'd hire a ghostwriter. Like, he had no interest in doing it, even though I, you could pay him all the money in the world. And so I think, you know, there's an element of just picking your projects based on the experience of doing it as much as just, like, you know, how much money they can pay you. Oh, it's always just, like that. It's about, like, having a great life, yeah. you know, besides, like, and doing good work while you're having a great life. Uh, you, you have a reason to do a movie. You don't pick the same reason more than yeah. three times in a row. <laughs> but I mean, are there films you guys have done or TV shows you've done just based on, you know, who it is, whether it's like picking a to do Alias or, you know, Lockout or something that you're like, this looks like a fun project. I might I might be turning Honestly, down, you know, like Avatar yeah. 2 to do it. But like this one seems like one that actually, you know, really Action enjoyed. movies are really fun to make. It's yeah. that movie magic time when you have green screen and wires and you know, it does hit you that you get to play make-believe for a living. You know, more so in, and I think, fantasy and, and some genre than others. And then, yeah, you know, I'm about like, to turn around and do a, a revival play from the 50s. So it all balances out. Mm. <laughs> no green screen there. I mean, can yeah, action through. movies like Halloween, like, yeah. every day of the year. <laughs> it's, you know, playing pretend. Do you guys think about what you pick in sort of terms of, like, being pigeonholed, because I talked about with this with a friend of mine who's an actor, about being pigeonholed or your legacy or whatever, you know, like, if I do this film, everybody's going to think I'm, like, the dumb blah, 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 or I'm the action star or something like that. Is that something you guys even think about, or you just mm. pick based on what interests you? Really. I pick based on a great, you know, whatever, whenever a script really talks to me, that's the, the movie I do, if I have, you know, certain connection with the writing. Well, I mean, that brings up a good point. W what about Twilight? Had you guys read the books yes, before you... Yes, we didn't have a script. We, we had to... Read. Just, like, chucked you the like, I novel? I hadn't read the books read. before I was cast. No, I, I started reading them when they told me I was going to do the um, the film. Yeah, but it was a it was a u quite unique situation because I think it's the first movie that I ever said yes to without reading a script. Yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, but. But Bill, but Condon why involved. we wanted to do it? You know what Bill I mean? Bill Condon's director, it's, it's on directing. It. So, of course, you're gonna want to work with Bill. Yeah. He's one of the greatest directors of you know the last 15 years. It's so. one of the most interesting sort of franchises too, in the sense that like it seems to really divide people. Like you know, like Harry Potter. Team Jacob and Team. Well, the, uh, even more than that, so I guess we have, we have like a four square of dividing going on. Um, I mean, also you know there are people who are incredibly passionate about that. I would say the. The fans of Twilight even seem more passionate than Harry Potter fans. But then there are people like freaking like uh, sparkly on. vampires. They're playing like, like the the you know the Harry Potter game in in colleges. The one with you know, how, how, what is the name of oh. it? Yeah. I don't I don't that's see pretty, mo like forty pretty. year old moms like freaking out when they see <laughs> these people on the passionate. streets. Though. And they're the third largest body of fans. In the world, they've actually calculated the body of I, fan I, size. What are the thing? first two? Did you? I'm, I'm assuming Trek and, and Wars. Yeah. Not like Lord of the Rings. It's bigger Lord than Lord of the Rings, Rings or Harry big. Potter. That's amazing. Yeah, maybe these are good points. These are good points. I don't have. This <laughs> maybe they lumped like... some of them together. I don't know. Uh, so in terms of this film, and I went down the rabbit hole to try and figure this because I have like a vague understanding. I've seen all the movies, never read the books, mm -hmm. and so when you guys were coming, I was like, all right, I should try and figure out what's going on here because I I didn't honestly remember. Uh, you guys in the first in breaking TB was it? T well, no, my character's not really. It was, it was a brief yeah, yeah, yeah. scene. Just a at brief the end. scene of the wedding. Well, yeah, and you'll miss it. Yeah. What What is your perception in, in terms of going into the final chapter? Because it seems 
from my perspective, to be kind of an interesting one because it seems like you could have ended it with the last film. Like, oh, she, no. She's, she's, she's now a vampire. Like, boom, her oh, eyes wake God. up. That no, seems like an ending moment. It's so it's, great It's so great to see her being a true vampire no, no, and doing all the vampiric stuff. <laughs> I yeah. love that. I well, love it's, that. It's more girl-to-woman arc. You know, her awakening is pretty great. With this character. And there's definitely stuff yeah. like, you know, the Volturi that they never had really addressed and kind of felt like they had glossed over to this point where I was like, really, that's all we're doing with that? Okay, they're probably going to come back to that at some point. But, I mean, this is... This is a big film. I mean, this is the end of this series. I mean, besides perhaps The Hobbit coming back, I don't know of any, Star Wars, I guess now, uh, but I don't know of any major sort of franchises that are happening at this moment, sort of even in the ballpark of this. Do you feel pressure to sort of deliver now? Well, well it's honestly, done. I mean, I guess. <laughs> Did you feel pressure to deliver? Let's no. change the tense. I think it's, personally, I think it's the best of the... The Twilight yeah. Saga. Boom. It really, I really feel like fans will be happy, and it brought, you know, thematically, it's more about community. You know, it's, it's, we've, we found them, you know, quite secure in their love, and it's more about everyone bending together to defend those they care about and the values they care for. So I didn't even realize there was like a whole like vegetarian vampire <laughs> thing going on until I started like going through like the Twilight Wikipedia thing, or, yeah. which is incredible. We're, we're part extensive. of the vegetarian. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. Are or one of them, clan. which is the, yeah, the only line. other one besides the Cullens, I guess. Anyway, yes. um, what are the cousins? Yes, that's what they said on Twilight Wikipedia. I don't know if that actually says well, in the book correct. or something. It is correct. They know they're Twilight. Yes, and then there's supposedly some other third one. I don't know, but they briefly mentioned. I, it was it was a lot to take in for me let me mythology is quite complex it is it is it really is um so that's coming out when the november 16th november 16th, november 16th. Um, awesome yeah and what do you guys have coming up and where can people find out more about you i know both of you have twitters at the very least we, we do, do finally our own names yeah yeah oh, that's, that's nice and easy at i like maggie that grace. yeah me and my Astro and maggie grace okay and uh films tv anything you guys want to make people pay attention to going forward um well i i'm about to start a broadway play oh yes yeah, so that's what you're super you excited to move to new york called picnic which uh previews in december wow that's soon. and um i'll be there yeah, <laughs> and Mia Maestro will be there. First row. And um, <laughs> I did a series for Showtime, which was a lot of fun, called Californication. Oh, yeah, that's so right. I forgot that you were in the yeah, yeah, yeah. When is me? that coming out? Uh, January. Oh, great. Yeah. That's, and, a, that's um, an intense show. I mean, that's like David Duchovny is like, so funny. Yes, right well, my character is sort of like the female Hank Moody. Really? So not a typical conquest. All right. <laughs> what about you? I have a film called Some Girls, uh, written by Neil Labude. Oh, who's wow. a writer that I adore. So I'm really excited with uh, Emily Watson and Adam wow. Brody. So <laughs> yeah, seriously. I'm just really excited about that one. Uh, and uh, we're crossing our fingers for Sandance. Let's see if we can premiere it there. Awesome. And uh, I have an EP coming out called Blue Eyed Sailor. It's coming out in two weeks. And um, there's three songs, two new songs, Blue White Sailor and Time to Go with Damien Rice. Mm. Um, and the third song is Jobeda, which was in the Twilight soundtrack last oh, wow. year. That's and, cool. I was going to yeah. say, I'm yeah. trying to like, muscle in on the Twilight soundtrack. I mean, like, put that in my contract, Boondock Saints. No, and also great. we just did this great video with uh, Guillermo Navarro and my friend Juana Sulay. Uh, Guillermo is the DP for Breaking Dawn, one and two. Wow. And uh, it's gorgeous it's a collaboration uh with cecilia paredes this great peruvian artist and it's kind of like an art music video and um it's coming out in three weeks as well everything's going to be on itunes so, so gorgeous i get to visit the set awesome. i was just yeah, that's awesome i'm away. definitely looking forward to checking yeah. out all that stuff and uh i wish you both luck with tb tb <laughs> tb tb d2 on november 16th november 16th or november 15th at 10, at 10 p.m, PM. Mm. if you bought <laughs> your ticket hard. already yeah, um, yeah they're, I think, selling out. I'm things. sure. Sell I'm sure. Out. I'm sure. Um, thank you guys so much. I wish you best of luck. And uh, check thank out more you. interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Two thousand can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the sound of stars. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels all right.